Whenever Jesus taught or preached, he used familiar images that the people could relate to. Many of them were farmers, shepherds. And so it's not surprising that Jesus would use this image of the good shepherd, who is also the Lamb of God. And in Jesus' time, and probably still today, the shepherds would bring their flocks uh, into a safe place for the night, and they would put them all together. And then in the morning, when it was time to turn them out into pasture, the shepherds would come in, and they would have a very special call for each flock. And the sheep knew that special call. They knew the voice of their shepherd, and they wouldn't go to another shepherd, but miraculously, they would follow the one shepherd whose voice they recognized. You know, you've heard it said that sheep are dumb. I don't think so. You know, people who are really smart know how to play dumb because then they surprise you. They outsmart you. You know, horses are, are like that. If you see a horse, you're going to have the impression the horse doesn't know what's going on. They're kind of just there. Horses have incredible senses. Their, their long nose, they can smell really well. Their eyes are almost on the side of their head, so they have almost 360 degree vision. Their hearing, their ears rotate. I ha some of you know I have a horse. I've had him for 24 years. He was given to me when he, when he was born. His name is Starbucks. <laughs> He's the color of coffee, the star, jagged star. He knows me really well, and I know him. Matter of fact, it, where he is on the Key Peninsula, there's a long driveway before I get to his pasture. And he watches every car that comes down that driveway. But when he sees my car, he whinnies and he comes immediately. Now, I don't know how he knows my car, or I don't think he can see me in the car, but he knows me. Like Jesus talked about the sheep, they know the Good Shepherd, and the Good Shepherd knows knows him. And so we do need to recognize not only the voice, but the presence of Jesus. You know, the disciples didn't recognize Jesus at first, the risen Lord. But eventually, there was something familiar about him, the way he walked, the way he talked, Matter of fact, in John's Gospel, it said no one dared ask him who he was because they knew it was the Lord. So there's always going to be some doubt, but we do have to learn how to discern the presence of Jesus and the voice of Jesus. Otherwise, we won't be able to follow him. We have to first recognize him before we can follow him. There's a beautiful little book, and some of you may be familiar with it, and it's called Jesus Calling. And it's written by Sarah Young. And every day there's a reflection, all year. She's speaking in the name of Jesus, and it's based on scripture. But it's Jesus speaking to you, and it's quite profound. You know, we have to use our imagination in order to listen to God. We have to use our imagination. God gave us the gift of our imagination 
so that we could hear what God wants to tell us. Now, not everything we imagine is from God, of course, and so it needs to be discerned. Once when I was making a retreat on the East Coast, it was an eight-day eight retreat. Every Jesuit is supposed to make an eight-day retreat here. And it was about the second day of the retreat, and I wasn't hearing any voices. I mean, not even crazy voices. And I was getting frustrated because it didn't seem that God and I were communicating very well. And I thought to myself, you know, God isn't speaking to me. I don't think God is speaking to me. But if God were to speak to me, if he were to speak to me, what would he want to tell me? What would he want me to hear? I allowed myself in my imagination to say out loud what God would want me to hear. And I started walking around the room. And at first I felt I was making it up, which I was at first, but all of a sudden it took a life of its own on. And I was convinced that this was exactly what God, what Jesus wanted me to hear. I wasn't just making it up. When I was helping direct a retreat for some seniors at Bellarmine, I would meet individually with, with them. And there, there, there was this one young man who came in, and he was just like me. He, there was no communication. He, he wasn't hearing anything. And so I thought, well, I'm going to use this exercise with him. And I said, um, would you be willing to speak out loud what you think Jesus might want you to hear and might want to tell you? Well, he thought I was crazy at first. But I said, yeah, go ahead, just start. And he started, and very quickly, he broke into tears because he knew he knew that that's what God, that's what Jesus wanted to tell him. And we all know, we just don't know that we know. We know. He gave us an imagination for a reason. And sometimes we misuse our imagination. I remember seeing a billboard on a church that said, worry is a waste of the imagination. It's a waste. You have to have a really good imagination to worry, especially to come up with the worst case scenario. We need to use our imagination. The Holy Spirit needs us to use our imagination. Jesus is not only the Good Shepherd, He's the Lamb of God. Behold, the Lamb of God. In the Eucharist, our shepherd feeds us and nourishes us. And we're called to nourish others. All of us have responsibilities for people, especially mothers, my goodness, mothers. Not only should we imitate the Good Shepherd, but we should let the Good Shepherd use us. Let the Good Shepherd shepherd our children and our grandchildren and the people that we're in charge of. I'm in charge of 10 Jesuits. Can you imagine? Them. And all of us have responsibilities but there are also privileges. We have the privilege of communicating the care and the love of God for others. So as we are being fed in the Eucharist this morning, let us pray for the grace to be able to feed others the way God has been feeding us.
And let us pray for the grace to recognize the voice of Jesus calling. <laughs>